Hello, my name is Lynn Elkins. I work for IBM's Advanced Technical Skills Group in North America, representing the WebSphere MQ on ZOS. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about WebSphere MQ and CICS workload skewing in a parallel Sysplex environment. This session was first presented at the WebSphere 2013 Impact Conference for customers, uh, requesting it at the Z Solution Suite meetings. The topic was so re well received and is so important to so many WMQ and CICS users, we wanted to bring it to a wider audience. What we're going to talk about is why, what is workload skewing and why it is a problem in some environments. What can cause and contribute to workload skewing? Some of the examples that we've seen include an asymmetrical sysplex, connection skewing, putting to waiting getter, and local favoritism. And then we'll talk about some mitigation techniques that we've seen successfully used at some customer sites. Queue manager clustering, gateway queue managers, and CICS CPSM options. So what is MQ workload skewing? MQ workload skewing is often detected when the workload is not close to being evenly distributed throughout the queue managers in a sysplex. Now it's important to remember here that MQ is really just a data delivery system. It makes no decisions as to who processes the data. It just delivers the data. The applications actually decide who and when get, actually processes the data. Workload skewing in a queue sharing group is often the result of the efficiencies of working locally. In ZOS, nearly all the subsystems try to process requests locally to take advantage of CPU efficiency. The path length is shorter and therefore you use less CPU to fulfill your requests. This is often less of a technical problem and really more of a pricing or a charging problem. If your um, monthly license charge rolling average is taken from the LPAR that is heavily favored for one reason or another, usage pricing is not going to reflect reality in your environment. This can cause overcharges in some cases. What we are offering up here are technical solutions to this problem, and they may impact the overall efficiency of your environment. You can have lower throughput and a slower response time if you truly do distribute the workload evenly across your environment. This can also cause increased capacity demands in downstream workload. Again, this can contort your MLC charges, and that's been an issue for a number of customers. So one of the first workload skewing causes uh, that we've seen and that we see repeatedly, and it tends to be kind of cyclical as people upgrade their hardware, is what we call the asymmetric sysplex problem. Essentially what happens, as you can see on the foils, is that you may end up in an environment where you have a mixed type of equipment that you're running in your plex. You can have two EC12s, one Z10, one Z9, as, are, as is shown here. And because of the faster processors on the EC12 engines, you may find that the vast majority of your workload goes to the queue managers and the CICS regions in that environment. This is normal. However, as, as I said earlier, this can really impact your monthly rolling average. It can also impact you know, the distribution of the work that you would like to see in your environment. Other examples include two LPARs that may have different numbers of engines that are um, established for them. Some could have dedicated, some could have shared. The dedicated usually gets priority. You can also have a situation where you have a, an LPAR that is co-located with the primary coupling facility that's used by your applications. Um, th this can mean that it gets much better response time from that coupling facility and therefore processes more of the workload. Connection skewing is another issue that we've seen cause workload skewing and imbalance within MQ and CICS. It can be historical. If you have a number of hard-coded connections to specific queue managers, then those connections are, 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 of course, going to be honored. And you may end up with workload skewing because you have 90% of your connections coming into queue manager A, for example, 
and very few of them coming into the second cue manager. Connection skewing can also be uh, the result of a cue manager outage. If you are using shared inbound channels, which many people in, in a plexed environment are, then you may find that as a result of an LPAR or a cue manager outage, your connections have gotten skewed to different cue managers or maybe even a single cue manager in your cue sharing group. This is a normal part of availability. As regions are taken offline, those connections will be redriven to a different cue, a different more available cue manager, I should say. And that will mean that you can end up in the situation where you have nearly all of your connections going to one queue manager and therefore all of your work flowing into that queue manager. Another workload skewing cause is actually a performance enhancement that was put into MQ in version 6. This is what we call put to waiting getter. Essentially, it's very simple. It means that if an application is putting a message and there is already a getting application waiting on a message on that particular queue, the queue manager may decide just to move the message into the application's open buffer and not ever post the fact that the message has come to this queue anywhere. Doesn't show up in the shared queues, doesn't notify the queue sharing group, doesn't notify any other instance of the application. So it saves considerably on the path length and, and the work that the queue manager itself is having to do. Um, this can also be impacted and or influenced by connection skewing. Uh, it can really seem to maximize the effect. This has saved people a lot of CPU since version 6 came out. So a lot of customers do not want to turn this capability off because it is controlled at a queue manager level, not on an individual queue. The last workload skewing cause that I was going to mention here is just local favoritism. And this is when a message is posted to a shared queue. The queue manager where the message is put is typically notified first about the availability of a message on that queue. This is normal XCF processing and it's trying to take advantage of local processing. Again, it is an efficiency that's built into all the environments and it can mean that your workload can become rather dramatically skewed from time to time. Join Lynn for part two of this presentation where she will start to discuss some of the mitigation techniques that can be used to reduce skewing effects.